right after 9-11, about 10 days after 9-11, I went through the Pentagon and I saw Secretary Rumsfeld and, and Deputy Secretary Wolfowitz. I went downstairs just to say hello to some of the people on the joint staff who had used, used to work for me. And one of the generals called me in. He said, sir, you got to come in. You got to come in and talk to me a second. I said, well, you're too busy. He said, no, no. He says, we've made the decision we're going to war with Iraq. This was on or about the 20th of September. I said, we're going to war with Iraq. Why? He said, I don't know. <laughs> he said, I guess they don't know what else to do. So uh, I said, well, did they find some information collect connecting Saddam to Al Qaeda? He said, no, no. He says, there's nothing new that way. They just made the decision to go to war with Iraq. He said, I guess it's like we don't know what to do about terrorists, but we've got a good military and we can take down governments. And um, he said, I guess if, if the only tool you have is a hammer, every problem has to look like a nail. So I came back to see him a few weeks later. And by that time, we were bombing in Afghanistan. I said, are we still going to war with Iraq? And he said, oh, it's worse than that. He said, he reached over on his desk. He picked up a piece of paper. And he said, I just, he said, I just got this down from upstairs, meaning the Secretary of Defense's office today. And he said, this is a memo that describes how we're going to take out seven countries in five years, starting with Iraq and then Syria, Lebanon, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, and finishing off Iran. I said, is it classified? He said, yes, sir. I said, <laughs> I said, well, don't show it to me. And I saw him a year or so ago, and I said, you remember that? He said, sir, I didn't show you that memo. I didn't show it to you. Uh, I'm sorry, what did you say his name was? <laughs> I'm not going to give you his name. So go through the countries again? Well, starting with Iraq, then Syria and Lebanon, then Libya, then Somalia and Sudan, and then back to Iran. So when you look at Iran, you say, is it a replay? It's not exactly a replay. But here's the truth, that Iran from the beginning has seen that the presence of the United States in Iraq was a threat, a blessing, because we took out Saddam Hussein and the Ba'athists. They couldn't handle them. We could, took care of it for them, but also a threat because they knew that they were next on the hit list. And so, of course, they got engaged. They lost a million people during the war with Iraq. And they've got a long and unprotectable, unsecurable border. So it was in their vital interest to be deeply involved inside Iraq. Um, they tolerated our attacks on the Ba'athists. They were happy we captured Saddam Hussein. But they're building up their own network of influence. And to cement it, they occasionally give some military assistance and training and advice, either directly or indirectly, to both the insurgents and to the militias. And in that sense, it's not exactly parallel, because there has been, I believe, continuous Iranian engagement some of it legitimate, some of it illegitimate. I mean, you can hardly fault Iran because they're offering to do eye operations for Iraqis who need medical attention. That's not an offense that you can go to war over, perhaps. But it is an effort to gain influence. And the administration has stubbornly refused to talk with Iran about their perception, in part because they don't want to pay the price with their domestic our de U.S. domestic political base, the right right wing base, but also because they don't want to legitimate a government that they've been trying to overthrow. If you were Iran, you'd probably believe that you were mostly already at war with the United States anyway, since we've asserted that their government needs regime change. So, uh, and we've asked Congress to appropriate $75 million to do it, and we are supporting terrorist groups, apparently, who are infiltrating and blowing up things inside Iraq, Iran. And if we're not doing it, let's put it this way, we're probably cognizant of it and encouraging it. So it's not surprising that we're moving to a point of confrontation and crisis with Iran. My point on this is not that the Iranians are good guys, they're not, but that you shouldn't use force except as a last, last, last resort. There is a military option, but it's a bad one.
I wanted to get your response to Seymour Hersh's piece in The New Yorker to two key points um, this week. Reporting the Pentagon's established a special planning group within the office of the Joint Chiefs of Staff to plan a bombing attack on Iran. Um, that this is coming as the Bush administration and Saudi Arabia are pumping money for covert operations into many areas of the Middle East, including Lebanon, Syria, and Iran, in an effort to strengthen Saudi-supported Sunni Islam groups and weaken Iranian-backed Shias. Some of the covert money has been given to jihadist groups in Lebanon with ties to Al-Qaeda. Fighting the Shias by funding with Prince Bandar um, and then with U.S. money not approved by Congress, funding the Sunnis connected to Al-Qaeda. Well, I don't have any direct information to confirm it or deny it. it, it it's certainly plausible. The Saudis have taken a more active role. You know, the, the Saudis um, You were just have, in Saudi Arabia. Hmm? You just came back from Saudi Arabia. Yeah, well, Arabia. the Saudis have basically recognized that they have an enormous stake in the outcome in Iraq, and they don't particularly trust the judgment of the United States in this area. We haven't exactly proved our competence in Iraq. So um, they're trying to take matters into their own hands. The real danger is, and one of the reasons this is so complicated, is because let's say we did follow the, the, the desires of some people who say, just pull out and pull out now. Well, yeah, we, we could mechanically do that. It would be ugly, and it might take three or four months, but you could line up the battalions on the road one by one, and you could put the gunners in the Humvees and cock, load and cock their weapons and shoot their way out of Iraq. You'd have a few roadside bombs, but if you line everybody up, there won't be any roadside bombs, maybe some sniping. You can fly helicopters over, do your air cover. You probably get safely out of there. But when you leave, the Saudis have got to find someone to fight the Shias. Who are they going to find? Al-Qaeda. Because the groups of Sunnis who would be extremists and willing to fight would probably be the groups connected to Al-Qaeda. So one of the weird inconsistencies in this is that were we to get out early, we'd be intensifying the threat against us of a super powerful Sunni extremist group, which was now legitimated by overt Saudi funding in an effort to hang on to a, a toehold inside Iraq and block Iranian expansionism. 